Thanks so much for stopping into Seven Gulches. We really appreciate it. Um, I know it's been a few weeks since we've posted a video. We're working really, really hard on, it's a pretty important project. Um, it's another video that you'll see pretty soon. Um, it's, it's a topic that's pretty close to our hearts here. So we wanted to do it right. Uh, but today is kind of a crappy weather day here in Nova Scotia. It rained a ton last night, uh, then freezing rain. So the, the ground is just, it's just crap to work in. You don't want to work outside in this. So uh, we thought it'd be a great day to uh, just go through the comment section and uh, answer some of the burning questions that you guys had. So uh, without further ado, let's, uh, let's get into it. Hey, I just thought with the crappy weather and everything that maybe we could uh, go through some of the questions in the comment section. Why not? I'm up for it. Sounds good. Remember the last time we did this? Uh, so uh, until next time, we'll, we're uh, looking forward to seeing you yeah, then. We'll see you then. That was our best take right yeah, there. That, that was, was good. good. Yeah. Um, I do have one other quick question. It's not forestry related. Uh, and I thought this would be a great time to ask. Um, I really wanted to ask if I could... Um, Ask your daughter to marry me. Yeah, that was quite an event, wasn't it? Uh, so the first question uh, comes from our last Ask Me Anything video. Um, it comes from Ryan LeBlanc. He said, <clears throat> how do you decide which trees to cut down? Uh, is it overgrowth and is what you're doing sustainable? Well, um, to answer that question, I, I can answer, there's a couple of answers to that. Right now, we're cutting storm damaged trees. Everything that's leaning or on the ground, we're trying to harvest those before they deteriorate to a point that they have no value uh, and create a fire hazard. But in normal conditions, when we're harvesting an area, it's very sustainable to answer that question. What I do is very sustainable because what we do on our property is we cut what's called the annual growth or the annual increment of the property. So if the property as a whole grows a thousand tons of fiber per year and that's all that we cut it will last forever on a, uh, to take that further we cut over mature trees we cut damaged trees we cut undesirable trees and uh, any any way that we can improve a stand um, we we do that so yes to answer your question is it sustainable yes um, and that's how we decide. We decide which tree to harvest. Basically, single tree selection harvesting is what I do. Sweet. Should we grab some chairs and maybe set some chairs out here? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> that would make it easier. Yeah, this is a little bit better, right? Yeah, it's better. Right. sign up there. It looks great. It's comfy. So or mine is anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so our, our next question, it comes from... Uh, um, from our everyday chainsaw maintenance video, which actually was shot right here. Yes. Um, it's uh, you should. It's from uh, Kelly Ronigan. Sorry if I'm saying your name wrong, Kelly. Um, you should really get into making videos of these two saws cutting in the woods, my friend. I'm waiting. Thumbs up emoji. <laughs> That's a good idea, and uh, I have no problem when Andrew has time, uh, and he's going to film me using the 562 limbing and felling. And the 565, which is what I use for uh, for junking or bucking uh, the trees into logs. So yes, to answer your question, we will. <laughs> uh, this one comes from Tools, Trucks, and Tech with Mike. So first of all, thanks for commenting, Mike. We appreciate it, and thanks for um, the feedback. Mike said, "Good video. I hope your channel grows. I think it will with this type of video." So the tractor attachments one. That was pretty cool. Yeah, well thanks Mike and, and uh, we hope so too. We hope that what we're doing is of interest and is useful for people. That's uh, basically our, our goal is to help people that are in the same business we are. Yeah, and hopefully we can keep those dude boys at bay from yeah, that video. Yeah, we don't want the dude boys. <laughs> <laughs> Go watch that video if yeah, you know what yeah, we're talking about. Yeah, you're going to see the dude boys. Um, this is also from the top four tractor attachments video. It's from Peter Ellis, he said, I get that yours is a small scale operation on the overall scale, but I chuckle because you're so much bigger than I ever imagined being. 
I'm working at a homestead scale with some forestry as part of a combined operation. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, you don't have to be big to be successful. Don't, don't feel intimidated because you're a small operation. Uh, I have small scale forestry equipment and uh, we don't cut a lot every day. We cut every day, but it, it's not like having a harvester or a buncher where you know, they cut uh, you know, 90 tons a day or whatever. We, uh, we don't do that. Um, okay, so next question. Um, actually, sorry, not a, next question, but it's not really a question. Uh, again, it's from the top four tractor attachments video. This one is from D Bowman. Uh, D says, congratulations. Um, uh, that was that was the that was the comment. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I think she's referring to the end of that video. Oh, okay. Uh, so thanks thanks so much. Really appreciate it. We're really excited about it, um, yeah. and uh, it's uh, it's exciting news. So uh, it's a, thanks. It's a good comment. A nice uh, nice event for us, and uh, and thanks for the nice comment. And if you're if you're wondering why D said that, uh, you'll just have to go watch it and you have to go uh, back and watch the and first. It's, it's a great video, anyways. You'll have fun with it. Okay, so the next question is, um, this is from the I couldn't operate my mill without these video. Um, the comment comes from Southern Adirondack Outdoor, so thanks for, for the question. Um, they said, do you have any idea as to how much power those lights draw? I have to research, um, I have to, research to see if my little wood miser LT15 could keep the battery charged. As far as other sawmill accessories, a younger, a younger me and a better back and knees. Uh, that's good. Uh, I don't know if they make that accessory yet. Um, and then they just said, oh, never mind. I just checked Norwood's website and it appears only owners of Norwood sawmills can order accessories like the light kit. So, I don't think the light kit itself would be very hard to come up with yourself. I don't, you know, the Norwood one is ideal for me, obviously, and it works tremendously well. Yeah, I can only imagine it's just some, even if you get some LED lights, they're not going to drain a lot of power. And I don't think that type of light takes very much uh, p power, and the, <clears throat> the setup on that uh, motor that we have, the Vanguard 23 horsepower, um, the I guess it would be a Magneto that charges the battery, it must be more than powerful enough. Um, I've had the mill for a couple of years now, and with the battery out in the cold, um, it's never been uh, down for charge. Anyway, I hope that answers that question. And yeah. Thank you very much for uh, for that. And we just saw your video the other yeah. night, and it's so, awesome. Yeah, so they it's have awesome. a really good video on their sawmill, uh, on their sawmill shed, uh, which we were watching the other day. Um, so that's a really cool video. We'll link that below. So um, yeah, big shout cool, out. Yeah, cool, cool video on your shed. And uh, if you're interested in the sheds, which a lot of folks seem to be interested in ours, so uh, go check out that that video. It's worth it's worth watching. Okay, uh, so the next question. Um, it's from the I couldn't operate my mill without these um, so the mill accessories video um, it, com it comes from Andre Cordemanche 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 sounds good um, sorry Andre we'll call you Andre yes. um, Andre says I'm planning a sawmill shed and wanted your opinion on a possible addition as with you we get a lot of s snow where I am and with the climate changing we get a lot of melt free cycles like we're having right now um, with your experience in cold climate, would you consider a roof over the log shed or the, over the log bed uh, to cover logs waiting to, be, waiting to be processed in order to prevent them from being buried in this ice and snow? Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll give you two answers to that. First of all, for me, that wouldn't work because I put the logs on my log deck with my loader. The purpose of my log deck is to keep my logs and my loader away from my mill shed so for that purpose it wouldn't work to have a roof over it because I wouldn't be able to reach in with a loader to put the logs in I'd be breaking something uh, on the second part of that question a roof would keep those logs dry so if you could make an arrangement where you could load out at the end and roll them in that would be fine for yeah. us for us with the space that we have in that place and the way that we built it it wouldn't work but I see your point and um, a roof over your log deck, keeping your logs dry or snow free I guess is more important. I don't think keeping them dry is of any benefit like because we, we you know we put water on our blades to lubricate. Right. Um, in the old days the, the logs came right out of the mill pond before they went on the saw. <laughs> so dry logs isn't an issue. 
but keeping snow off them would be so. It would be uh, awesome if you had if you have the space to have a really long log deck and yes. then just build a roof over half of it. I mean, roll them in. Yeah, yeah. And, and, <laughs> and yeah, if you so, do that, uh, yeah, <laughs> let well, us know. We want to see, see the diagram. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, that's a, I guess a two part answer. But uh, your point is well taken. Um, if I could do it, I would. But for now, the way I have it works for me. Um, they also said, uh, I'm considering half of a long log bed in order to easily drop new logs to be sawed. So I guess ex exactly what we were saying. Yeah. Uh, let me know what you think. Thanks. Um, so hopefully that answers your question. Um, but um, Andre also has a really cool video, <laughs> which we, we, you know, when you when you leave comments, we like to go and browse your video. So he has a really cool video um, with his uh, wild, or wildlife camera. That's the trail cam. Yeah, trail cam. That's strapped to a tree or something. Who knows what it's strapped to? But there's a bunch of moose and deer. Um, so we thought that was really interesting. And we just yeah. What's really funny is these guys gave me a trail cam for Christmas, and I've been trying my darndest without putting bait out. I've been trying my darndest to capture some of the wildlife around our area because there's a lot of deer and coyotes and yeah, you know, there's a few wildcats and foxes. So far, I've got one of my best friends running by. That triggered the camera, and I got one part of a crow's wing. <laughs> I haven't been able to get any of the animals that I want, but yours is awesome, so I'm not giving up. Yeah, hopefully we can catch some moose or yeah. something fun like that. Yeah. Um, and maybe not just the neighbors running through the trail. Yeah. <laughs> this next question comes from Ken Boerma. Boerma? Ken Boerma. Oh, um, Ken. Ken. We'll call you Ken. Oh, Thanks Ken. for the comment, Ken. Uh, it's from, uh, again, from the, this is how we set up our sawmill shed video. Uh, he said, how big is the cement pad? I'm thinking uh, my mill shed is going to look like that. Love it. Thanks. So what, what I did was I, I, um, I looked at some other guys uh, that have made uh, mill sheds and I, I asked them what their issues were. And uh, the biggest thing they said was they made their, uh, their, their uh, cement pad a little bit too small. So I made mine 24 by 12. and, and um, since I built the mill shed and bought the mill, um, I bought the mill first and built the mill shed, I bought one of those um, uh, temporary extensions that you can add, a two foot extension that you can add and remove. And if I'd have known I was going to do that, I probably would have made it two feet longer uh, because it sticks out over, but I can take it off too. When I'm, most of the time, I don't even need the extension. I only, when I'm doing extra long beams, do I have it on there. Uh, anything over 16 feet I have that extension on and um, so we made the we made the pad 12 by 24 and if you're not going to do anything with extremely long pieces that's more than you'll ever need if you decide that you're going to get another extension uh, that makes uh, you know beams longer than 16 feet or boards longer than 16 feet I'd recommend going to 26 feet and you still got lots of room. Um, I guess that's my comment on that. So 12 yeah. by 24, 12 would, by 24 is great. Would there be a reason, I mean, in theory, could why not, I mean, if you have the space, why not go as big as possible? Well, that's is the thing. A downside to the bigger? Well, spent very expensive right. and, and uh, that, but um, uh, no, if you've got the room and, you, and you've got the dollars, uh, go a few feet extra uh, because you know, you may decide in the future to expand, and uh, I can see that. I can understand that. Yeah. For us, it was I built it right beside a road where I, I can move stuff in and out, and trucks go by. I didn't want it to be too big, but it's big enough for me. Yeah. Yeah, great question. Thanks for that. And good luck. Uh, okay, great. So next question. Uh, this is from Troy Holler. Um, this is from the This Is How We Set Up Our Sawmill Shed video. Um, Troy says... Great video. I've been looking for a while now on how to build a shed for my mill. Did you use laminate beams for the span of the door openings? If you have any other information or diagrams, I would greatly appreciate looking at them. Thank you. Troy, everyone's been asking about this. Thanks for the question. Um, we've had so many comments about the, the diagrams. Um, I think you mentioned them in the end of the video there. Yeah, what, uh, what I've been doing is uh, giving people my contact or getting people to contact me and I've been emailing or sending on Facebook Messenger the actual diagrams um, but since we've had so much interest in them uh, we have another solution we're actually gonna put the pictures up and we're gonna talk about them here in a few minutes and uh, 
Let's go do that. Yeah, yeah, we'll take you through all the, all the diagrams, and then hopefully everyone has them, and um, yeah, and if you have any other questions, um, leave them in the comments below too. One thing to answer your question about the laminate um, beams, the beams are made of two layers of 2x8s and 2x4s, so yes, we've, we've, put the, uh, we've put two 2x8s together on top and two 2x4s together on the bottom of both sides actually. And uh, it's pretty rugged. It worked pretty well. Yeah, let's go. Let's, let's go ahead and look. I'll set this over here just for now. So we've got three diagrams, um, which will will be a top-down camera. So we've got the side view here. Um, this uh, this one here is our wide opening where the logs come in. Okay, and it says two by six there, but we actually used two by fours because we thought two by six was excessive. Okay, so there's two two by eights together there, and they're broken in different places. They go all the way over to the edge of the building. Okay, so it's suspended by about four feet of solid uh, underneath, and it's fastened very well there. It's fastened very well there. These braces, it's just a diagram, but the braces, there's braces outside that go all the way to the top, and there are braces underneath as well. So that, it makes it pretty strong, okay? Uh, these are six by six posts, and they're on post holders that are embedded in the cement. So they're not moving. It shows the opening from post to post being 20 feet, but it's not because there are posts outside of those uh, post. So the, the opening itself, after it's uh, all the other trim and boards, is actually just over 18 feet. Okay. okay. So this is the high side. This is where uh, the operator side of the mill, and we actually take the lumber out on this side or out through the end, depending gotcha. on whether it's really big. And it, again, six by six posts. There's three on each side. This one, we have uh, two by eights up here and two by fours down here. It says two by six, but we changed that to two by four after we started building because we realized that that was excessive. We have it braced very well, but these are truss work and we have that all along. That's just a sample, but there's truss work all along and then it's boarded in. We strapped it off after we had, after we had all this stuff and we strapped it off and we put vertical boards on and one part we haven't finished yet at the upper end around the mill uh, engine where the engine and the saw are stored we're going to put we're going to do bats we're going to do board and bats but we didn't do that yet we've wait I was waiting until the shrinkage was stopped because we used actually lumber that we just milled when we built it now this is the wall at the end where when the mill's idle, the saw and the, the, the everything on the carriage is up underneath it, and it's walled in. And it actually protects really well. And we put a, a piece of translucent material uh, to make a window. Um, it withstood the hurricane, so it's okay. Uh, that allows it to have a little bit of light in there in the daytime. Anyway, and the measurements are accurate. We, this side, is these are seven feet. This side is nine feet. And um, that gives it a you know uh, enough of a slope so that the snow basically comes off it. Uh, we don't we haven't yet had a problem with heavy wet snow on the roof. If we did, I have a, one of those roof rakes anyway where I could take it off. Anyway, yeah, that's what do great. You think? That, that yeah, will explain it. So I hope my little explanation was clear enough. Uh, the diagrams themselves, I think, are pretty well self-explanatory. But if you do have any questions, put them in the comments below of this video and we'll try to get back to you. We try to answer those comments on the, the YouTube site, but we'll, uh, we'll do every now and then, we'll do a video where we actually can go a little more in depth and, yeah. and answer the questions with a little bit more clarity, hopefully. We appreciate all the comments. We read them all. Uh, and we always, uh, we, we talk a lot about you and your, your comments and everything uh, over you yeah. know, over a beer or something at night. So uh, Or two um, beers. Yeah. <laughs> yes, we appreciate it. So uh, if you like this video, please uh, subscribe to our channel. We really appreciate it. Uh, we put a lot of hard work into these. And every time someone subscribes, it really makes a big difference for us. And if you have any more questions, leave them in the comments below.